Hi there, Tim G5TM, back for another one. Thanks for joining me. Now I put together a little vertical antenna last week, multi-band, three bands in fact, uh, with no need for a tuner. And I thought I'd try it in the back garden. It worked really well. And I thought I'd share the design with you. Let's have a look at the design then and see what the antenna was all about. So the antenna is a three band vertical for 10, 15 and 20. And it uses one wire with of course some traps. And what a trap does, it basically stops any RF for that particular frequency. So you've got a trap there for 10 meters. Well, 10 meters only goes up as far as that trap, including that trap as well, because it does pretend some loading as well for 10 meters. The 50 meter trap takes everything before it and stops 15 meters at that point, and 20 meters as flows all the way up the antenna. Now you'll notice that the lengths are pretty much shorter than normal quarter waves because the traps actually provide some loading. So on 10 meters, for example, you can see that the element is only 1.82 meters long. Usually the 10 meter uh, element would be about 2.2, 2.3 meters, maybe a bit longer. So the, the trap provides some loading. The 15 meter element, including the two traps and a bit of wire in between, that 17 centimeters of wire in between the two traps there, is also quite short as well overall and as is 20 meters. The overall height of the antenna is about 2.9 meters. So overall, we have quite a, uh, a short antenna, but uh, what's that in feet? About nine, nine and a half feet, maybe 10 feet, something like that. So it's quite a low uh, profile antenna and it allows you to use those three bands without any uh, tuner. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet, which you probably noticed, is at the bottom of the 10 meter trap, you can see a pigtail coming down. I'll explain more about that later. That's not normally a part of the design, just something I had to incorporate as part of mine. And I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But it was designed, or was used, I should say, to help bring in the SWR on 10 meters. As you can see there, I've used about 42 meters of radials. You can use as much as you want. I've just used that because that's probably going to be, you know, 40, it happened to be 42, could have been 40, could have been 37, doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to use about that many radials because uh, effectively I'm going to take this portable, so therefore I don't want to put too many ground radials down. Each of the radials, by the way, are, are two meters long. So effectively I've got 21 two meter radials. And you just run the coax back to the radio. I didn't use any, any common mode choke at the feed point. I just ran the coax back into the radio and didn't observe or get reported any issues at all with any RF. So going back to those traps then. Now I didn't actually make these. I have to admit I'm uh, time poor at the moment. So I just uh, found a guy on eBay who was selling them and uh, he makes them. So I just bought a couple. I, bought, I actually bought them for 12 meters as well, but you can't load 12 meters into this because it's just as you can see there is, you know, you've got 17 meters, 17 centimeters of wire, I should say, between the, the 10 and the 15 meter trap. So getting 12 meters in there would be practically impossible. So I'll use that for another project, maybe for a 12 and 17 meter vertical. But going back to the traps, they're, they're coax traps. And uh, the first thing I did when I bought them was actually to test where they were actually resonant, where they dipped, because it's important to try and get the dip either below or above the band on which you, or the frequency, I should say, or the, the range of frequencies, I should say, that you're looking to operate. Because if you have a dip, if that coax trap is providing a dip right in the band where you're going to be operating, well, that's okay. But what it will do is it'll increase your bandwidth, but for your SWR, which sounds good, but it will increase the loss as well. So I tested both of these traps out. And as we can see, look, uh, looking at the 10 meter one first of all that was uh, just below the 10 meter band there you can see the uh, you can see the dip we had and we had exactly the same happening as well for 15 meters so that was that was uh, that was quite pleasing it's a really easy and uh, really easy thing for you to do by the way you just basically need an analyzer you need to just need to be able to make a loop of wire and just literally have it have the trap inside that loop of wire. Squeeze the loop as tightly as you can without touching the actual trap, and you should be able to see in your analyzer uh, a dip occurring at a certain frequency. And luckily for me, as I say, both of these dips were under the actual uh, the band itself, so that was a good sign. By the way, I'll leave a little um, a link in the description if I can find it from where I found the, uh, the the traps from or where I got them from. There's lots of stuff online, by the way, about how to make your own coax trap or your other forms of traps as well. But I'll leave a link if I can find it. If it's in the description, it's there. If it's not in the description, I couldn't find it, okay? 
Um, so how well did the uh, the antenna tune? Well, you know, you've got slightly less bandwidth, but it's still pretty good in terms of the SWRs. Let's have a look. So uh, we can see, first of all, that 20 meters is absolutely fine. And by the way, you tune it another way. You tune it uh, for the 10 meter element first, and then you build the antenna up in that respect. You add the trap, then you look at 15 and so on. 20 meters was fine. 15 meters, absolutely no problems at all. I mean, it, it, there wasn't a great dip on 15, but it was all comfortably under two to one. And the majority of the band was around 1.5 to 1.7 to 8, 8 to one. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, if you think about it, 15 has uh, has loading just below and just above. So you, you've, you've got quite a bit of loading happening with 15 meters. And then finally looking at 10 meters or 10 meters, we had a slight issue. Um, it was it was one of these where if I, uh, it, as it was, 10 meters was actually quite high in terms of uh, the, the dip was higher up in the band. So what I needed to try and do then, I needed to make the antenna longer. So I lengthened the 20 meter element. And of course I brought 10 meters in, but meant that uh, 20 meters was very much uh, too long. So what I did, I came up with the idea of putting in a little pigtail, a little extra bit of loading on the 10 meter element. So I attached that to the, the bottom of the trap. It's about, I think it's about 18 centimeters long, six, seven inches long. And that didn't affect 15 or 20 at all, but what it did do, it made 10 meters that bit electrically longer. And the SWR came right in very nicely into the SSB part of the band. So as it stood, eventually after a bit of head scratching, We've got a decent tune on 10, 15, and 20 meters. So I used the antenna at home and I made some contacts. Okay, good evening, I'm 59, over. 59 plus, Todo, thank you for the contact. 73, good weekend, bye. 35 p.m., hello, 59, my name is Vlad, over. Okay, thank you very much for calling me. You're 5 by 9 QSL? Yeah, you're 5 and 8, 5, 8, QSL? QSL, so 5 by 8, 5 by 8 for me, thank you very much. So that worked quite well. Um, I didn't film all the contacts I made. Uh, there was a contest with the IARU International HF Contest or something. So I used it a lot on, on 15 and 20. Uh, made a bit of DX contacts on 15 into Argentina, Cape Verde, that was nice. And made a few contacts around Europe on 10 meters as well. It's amazing how a band suddenly opens doing a contest for a weekend, isn't it? Because the bands weren't, weren't in great shape, but um, you know, put a reasonably big contest on, suddenly you've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of signals. But it was nice to make quite a few contacts, and it's a good actual way and a good test of your antenna doing a contest weekend, so quite happy with that. So in summary, pretty happy with the antenna, really. Uh, it's only about three metres high, so quite unobtrusive. Uh, the overall horizontal footprint is basically about four metres, because each radial is about uh, two metres long. So the overall footprint, the round footprint of the, of the radial field would be about four meters. And to be honest with you, we're pretty well. Um, it's good in that you don't need a tuner. I think it'd be an ideal little bit of vertical to take with you if you don't want to take a lot of space up. If you want to work and have fun, say on contest weekends, like CQ Worldwide, for example, my little antenna to use. Really low profile at home as well. It's only about 10 foot high, three meters high. And it seems to work pretty well. So I'm very happy with what, what happened there. Next thing I'm going to do is take it out and about portable. Uh, I live quite near the sea. It'll take five seconds to set up because you've only got the one radiator. Scatter a few radials down. Should be a lot of fun. So uh, we'll be trying that pretty soon. Well, thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe, then click there. And there's another video coming up there. Take care. And uh, in the UK, it's very hot. So we're trying to keep cool. And I hope you enjoy the radio wherever you are in the world. All the best. Bye-bye.